religion, superstition, war, politics, disease, fear, all connected like a web of stress in 17th century New England and Salem's caught in the middle. The more they struggle, the more dangerous their fate. Everything seemed to be going wrong at the same time. Marilyn Roach is a leading expert on the witch trials. She's the author of several books, including Six Women of Salem. In the 1970s, she pours over documents looking to track down Salem's hangman. She comes up empty, but the search leads to a discovery. She's looking at documents that may have been overlooked by historians. It's a slight time warp. You're in the same space, relatively speaking, as whoever wrote it. And that can be kind of interesting feeling. So you have politics, climate, war, Native Americans, and disease? And all this is going on, and meanwhile, people have panicked over the possibility of witches in their midst. Must be the season of the Salem is 22 miles north of Boston. During the past few decades, it's evolved into a major tourist destination, especially in October. Close your eyes, put your pen on the paper, let your hand go. They had a seance in Great Britain and Lady Cole You don't have to go far to find a ghost tour, psychic shop, custom fit vampire fangs, a monster museum, or other tourist attractions rooted in the hunt for witches. But of course, there were no witches. Most tourists never see the true historical sites. There are some places the trolley won't travel, and other places that no longer exist, like the home of Reverend Paris, where it all begins. This is where it all started in 1692. This was the home of the Reverend Samuel Paris in Salem Village. It's now called Danvers, and it's about six miles from Salem. Reverend Paris's daughter, Betty, and niece, Abigail, started acting strangely, screaming and convulsions. Dr. William Griggs couldn't find any physical reason, so he suggested witchcraft. Betty said the family slave Tatuba had been teaching them about the occult. But Roach says there's no hard evidence she was teaching the girls anything. Christians often dabbled in folk magic. So when I think of these people, I think of them as Puritan Christians, and I guess it might surprise people that these people are dabbling in this folk magic themselves. That was a surprise when I found out that people were using folk magic. It was considered scientific, which it wasn't. A neighbor of the Paris family has a solution, a witch cake. As instructed, Tatuba bakes a cake with the girl's urine and feeds it to the dog. Nothing changes. Other girls in town who visit the Paris home also begin acting odd. Could they also have been sick? I mean, I'm trying to wrap my right. head around why they suddenly, if they're, they always did folk magic, why now are they suddenly having convulsions and so mm. forth? They may have been sick from something. There probably were different reasons, but they're getting overexcited. And I think a lot of it was after it got started, psychological. But uh, three or four of the people who were afflicted actually died that year. So something was wrong with them. Psychologists call it mass hysteria or conversion disorder. If you're panicked and not breathing right, you're not getting the blood in your brain correctly. As the blood is not circulating properly, it, it interferes with your vision beginning with the peripheral so it can look like these shadowy things creeping up on you. And that would fuel the fear that this specter's out there. It's like a ghost of a person who's still alive. The town elders arrest Tatuba. She denies everything at first, but she quickly realizes she needs to tell them what they want to hear. She tells stories about specters attacking people through Salem which can sometimes mean just a dirty look. It was assumed that sight was a power that came out of your eyes you know, into the world. That's what they assumed for centuries, but it was just common knowledge that it was eye beams going out, and therefore the witch could project some hurt through a dirty look. All these people here can attest to my good I, Christian I nature. Sure <laughs> the accused are mostly women, but a diverse group, a beggar, a respected woman at church, 
and an eccentric woman named Bridget Bishop. People accuse Bishop's specter of biting and choking them. I am innocent, good people, please. Actors recreate her arrest and trial. Have you given consent that some evil spirits go about in your likeness? I know nothing of it. With no one to defend them in Salem's 17th century legal system, they are condemned to death. I am innocent. I know nothing of it. I've done no witchcraft. The trolley won't take you to Gallows Hill. It's behind a Walgreens near a soccer field water tank, and a number of homes on this steep hill. It was once believed the hangings took place at the top. A few years ago, Roach helped a team of historians and archaeologists determine the hangings took place only halfway up the hill at Proctor's Ledge. Public executions are supposed to be public to teach a lesson, and you could teach them a lesson from the ledge a lot easier than going up to the top of the hill. Proctor's ledge was high enough to create a spectacle, a warning for others. At the bottom of the hill, a memorial for the 14 women and five men who are hanged. One man, Giles Corey, is crushed to death with stones for refusing to enter a plea. Then, a pivotal moment. Pastor George Burroughs shocks the crowd when he recites the Lord's Prayer, something that is supposed to be impossible for a witch. He's still hanged, but people start to have doubts. Governor Phipps puts a stop to the trials when those close to people in power are accused, including the governor's wife. This is Witch House, and it shouldn't be called Witch House. It should be called the Judge's House. Judge in Salem, the tours will show you the Salem Witch House, the only home with direct ties to the witch trials. This is where they examine some people from the witchcraft trials to see if they had witch marks. It's the home of Judge Jonathan Corwin. There's the Witch Museum and an old church. And the Witch Memorial to honor the victims who would have been refused Christian burials. They think it's a, a movie prop. People will often come and say, was this built for Hocus Pocus? Tourism uh, director Kate Fox directs visitors to these more public places. There are 20 stones inscribed with victims' names like Bridget Bishop and Giles Corey. Kate, so tell us what this is here. So this is the entrance to the Witch Trials Memorial and uh, the threshold is inscribed with the final words of the victims during the trials. Uh, if I would confess, I should save my life. O oh Lord, help me. I am innocent of such wickedness. God knows I am innocent. I do believe not guilty. Salem's mix of old graveyards and occult shops can be confusing. Sometimes tourists have trouble distinguishing between real history and Halloween props. Do some people find it disrespectful? Absolutely. A lot of visitors don't understand the sanctity of this space, that it's a place to remember the victims, to reflect on what happened in 1692. If we can inform a fraction of our, our visitors who are coming just for the fun, the Halloween, the haunted houses, then I think we've done our job. Smell that? Isn't that gorgeous? And now there are witches in Salem. The Wiccan movement starts in the early 20th century. We have two local growers that are organic. And it attracts followers like really Terry Colgren. You want to make sure that the herbs you get have integrity. Her business is Artemisia Botanicals, where she sells herbs like cinnamon chips, black walnut leaves, and elderberries for what she says is nutrition and healing. Despite the dark history, she says for a witch, Salem is a place to enlighten people. We started talking to them. They were taught about the Salem witch trials. They didn't realize that there were hundreds of other trials in other cities and towns all over. I mean, where there was two people that met on a crossroad, one of them was gonna be blamed to be a witch. We don't have a devil. That's a Christian concept. So from a witch perspective, it's time to move on. It's time to, you know, pick up your broom and start sweeping and get rid of the clutter. What about Tituba? Not much is known. It's believed she came from South America through Barbados. Once a pivotal figure in the witch trials, she escapes the hangman and disappears from the historical record. Marilyn Roach still hasn't discovered the identity of the hangman, 
But he's hardly the worst villain in this chapter of history. Some accusers, like Ann Putnam, confess the error of their ways. She said that she was deluded by Satan. She was mistaken. For those falsely accused, their families try to clear their names. I am innocent, good people, please. 300 years later, Massachusetts officially exonerates the victims. And yet, from social issues to superstition, the ignorance of the witch trials still haunt the world today. Let's be the season of